I was watching a video on YouTube and it was a guy doing electro optics or not electro optics, um, opti optomechanical, I guess that's the right word, optomechanical. So if you're an optics engineer, you're used to working with really, really small little units of distance. Also need to have a partner. So if you're an optics engineer, you're usually partnered with a mechanical engineer. And that mechanical engineer is also very, very in tune with very, very small distances, very, very small movements. You might use a micrometer uh, in big things, but you, maybe you need to use a um, interferometer to look at uh, distances of, of the size of light, okay? And uh, micron, a micron is kind of the size of light, that's an infrared light. Um, so measuring in microns is something that these types of mechanical engineers do all the time. And the optics people usually ask these mechanical engineers to do impossible things. <laughs> so you, you hang on to one if he's, if he's really good. So what this guy was showing, I could tell that he was the mechanical side and not the optical side. He knew terms. He knew what a Zernike polynomial was, but um, but he wasn't a designer. He 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 was the optics guy. I think the name of his channel was uh, Broken Taps. So he's like a machinist, but like a really really high precision machinist. So he was using quarter watt resistors and measuring how a quarter watt resistor will expand and contract with heat and maybe using that as a deformable mirror and a telescope system, stuff like that. It was a paper that he read, so this is like third-hand information now. Um, but I was just kind of curious, you know, what would a big resistor, uh, how far would a big resistor move? Now, I think most of the movement of a quarter watt resistor comes from the metal expanding, not the resistor itself expanding, but the metal expanding. Well, this is made out of um, uh, ceramic. So I was kind of wondering what a 20 watt resistor made out of ceramic, how far it moves when it's got 20 watts going through it. So I thought, okay, how am I gonna measure this thing? I don't wanna measure it with micrometers because it's gonna get hot and stuff. And I wanna kind of see it real time. So what we're gonna do is we are going to hold it. So I figured out we'll take this and we'll shove it on this, well, not shove it, we'll just lay it on this uh, pin, okay? And the pin will hold it. And if we push against it, the, the table will hold it constant and we can measure um, how far it grows with something like a uh, like an indicator, okay? So here's an indicator I have, and so I'm going to put that in, and it, oh, it kind of goes in the hole, so that, that's not gonna work. Now, um, one of the reasons I wanted to film this was to let people know that there are, these tips on these indicators are detachable, okay? And you can get a set of different tips. So, uh, let's see if I can zoom down a bit. Um, there's big ones and there's little ones and there's sharp ones. This one is a spring loaded one. Uh, there's one inside here that's a really, really deep, deep one that you can reach into crevices and stuff. Anyway, some are round, some are pointy, like I said. So we're just gonna use uh, this big, big one here. Okay, so now we have this big surface and I'll put that onto our Metatoyo. All right, now we can come along here and we can squeeze that. Now everything is nice and stable, right? Let me move the camera a bit here. Okay, so I'm gonna zero it. So we are measuring in millimeters. So that little last digit there is one micron. Okay, so uh, we are, we can zero it out anytime by hitting the yellow button. So we have one micron. All right, so let's take a power supply and I'm gonna hook up uh, some power to the, to the resistor. So let me put the clip leads on here. Oops, I just banged it. All right, let's get everything, everything stable again and zero it. Didn't zero it very good. There we go, zeroed it. And, I will apply, it's kind of, I probably touch things. I'm gonna zero it again. I'm gonna turn on the supply. So now we have 20 watts going into the resistor and you can see right away, four microns, five microns, six, seven, eight.
Now his mirror that he wanted to deform, he needed a particular time constant, so this is obviously a little slow as well. His ended up being too slow for his application, and this is always also quite slow here. Um, I'll turn it off now. But I was just curious, you know, how, how much deformation do we have in ceramic at uh, 20 watts kind of thing? If you're going to build something that actually needs to be deformed, so people usually use piezoelectric uh, transducers and stuff for that sort of thing. But, um, you know, heat works as well. I thought I would shoot this just to spark some information. Here comes the gardener. So I thought I'd shoot the video just to give you some information about heat expanding simple things just like resistors. And anytime people see a new idea, sometimes it sparks, oh, I could use that in this application. Oh, I never thought about that. Just a simple resistor could maybe do what I need to do. I don't need to have that piezo thing in there. Um, or maybe it's like, oh, I need to worry about that. I didn't understand that, or I didn't even consider that maybe my resistor is expanding. And that's why my surface mount solder connections are breaking because it's the thermal expansion of the board that's doing that. And I need to go measure that. So it just kind of gives you some ideas about heat, expansion, measuring things, the tools to measure things. Maybe you haven't seen the, uh, the little uh, tips. This is a Sterrett set. Um, and uh, yeah, 